get ready to go into the new measure L. It's coming. Is anybody surprised we're having this conversation today? No, no. I'm surprised yeah. it's so that, That's the number one thing I, I think all of us need to realize. This was coming no matter what we did, no matter how we have it. So the shelter <coughs> has an opportunity. He's got free, free rights to bring something forward. The good part is Prop R and Measure C take this out of the hand of the council. So on Facebook, a lot of people said, well, what's council doing about this? What's the city's perspective on this? And the reality is, Prop R, Measure C, make this a voter initiative. I cannot, if I wanted to, do anything about it. It's just the reality that it goes to a vote of the people. So that means you guys each have a vote on it, just like the rest of the members of our city. Your vote is not much different than my vote. It's no different than my vote. It's one vote. So, th so that's why it's in this position it is. There were some comments about what is the city's opinion on this. I had a meeting with several staff members um, middle of last week, and in that meeting, their, their thoughts were about the same as what I hear going on in the community and mine. I need more information. They don't have information. We all need to sit down and hear what's taking place. So the flyer you've got in front of you was mine, request from the development group and team to, to inform us, to put this in front of us and to start sharing what their thoughts are and to get our ideas, to let us put our influence in there. So, so the question is, are we going to, as Sharon mentioned, listen, pay attention, and then decide if it's acceptable, not acceptable, and, and if we choose to fight it as a community, which is my suspicion is where we're going to probably end up, mm -hmm. we have to know the facts. We have to know what's going on. Just to blindly go out there and say, object to it, it's probably not going to be the best route to follow. Now, there been a few things on the internet, the Facebooks, the social medias, kind of hammering at Laura and Virginia. You know, they've been long time good standing members of our community. Um, I'm very confident they didn't step up to do this because they thought they would drag something over our eyes, but because they want to do what's, what they feel is the best. Now, whether or not they got to that point, let's find out. There's some, some aspects of this I'm excited about. We're not talking about 1,900 homes anymore. We're talking about well under 1,000 homes. That's a benefit. Now, it's a lot more than 125 homes, 165 homes that are slated for out there, so that's a, a negative to it. But there's a lot of moving components to this, there's a lot of parts to it. My suspicions are they will probably have this on, well actually based on conversations last year, they will probably have this on the 2016 presidential election ballot. So we've got some time to, to hear what's going on, <coughs> pay attention to what's going on, and to find out the details about it. I'm fortunate. I do have a meeting tomorrow with uh, city staff. They are going to find out some of the details from the development team. So I'll get a chance to get a preview of some of the things taking place or some of their conversations tomorrow. November 4th, please come. It's your meeting. It's your opportunity to hear, to voice, and to guide the way that you think this should go. And ultimately, it is your guys' vote to make a difference at the end. Did I miss anything? The only thing that I would add is not only do we go on board, but we do not, even whatever is passed, we still don't, we, we don't lose the protections of RNC. They stay there for us until okay. the people vote it otherwise. But whatever the people come to and they vote, it will amend RNC, they won't get rid of it. So okay. that will so that, always that's be good there. Thing, that's one of the things I want to, that's a, a personal part for me. I want to make sure RNC are continually protected. I saw one other hand go up in the very back. Yeah, um, this is our first time here at one of these meetings. I get calls all the time, but kind of showing up. And it's the first time I've heard about your building community going, where is it going? This is, uh, if you recall, last year we had Measure L, which is Rancho La Sierra lands. The land up alongside the river bottom, it's um, three, maybe four little valleys and and um, arroyos out there. It's beautiful land. It's, it it is really Sierra beautiful. Or? 
Arlington? North of Arlington, before the river bottom. Oh, okay, yeah, that's where the horse trails are. And all the horse trails, mm -hmm. all the equestrian area. Want to build houses in there? Yep. Yeah. yep. That's the intention. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Martin, if you learn that the great majority of your constituents are overwhelmingly opposed to this proposal, are you in a position to fight for your constituents? I am. And let them know, we don't want it, my neighbors don't want it. No, I am. I am. It, it, I represent us. So I get to do what we do. We shouldn't have to put out money to buy this thing year after year after year. Well, you know, I so think that not a nickel. I think I think that's an important part of it, though. I think that's why it's important to sit down and have these conversations and to understand. Because last year we were very fortunate that a couple of people put up large chunks of dollars and helped fight and protect against it. The concern is what if those dollars don't keep coming available and developers have very deep pockets. So we get involved in this, we help guide where it goes, and then we make the decision whether or not it's appropriate or not. And then <coughs> social media is going to be our friend. Social media is a good way to spread the word. You know, you we weren't going to ask questions at this point. Okay, but you want I, to let Kevin but, talk? But, no, I think it's appropriate because um, is everyone okay with that? If we actually open it for some questions now, we'll go to the councilman bash after that, then we'll reopen it and be able to maybe address some of those things. So I'd say let's go on for maybe 10 minutes of questions. Is that good for you? Where do we get at the end? So um, first hand that comes up, Tim, you've had yours up for a while. Go ahead. In response to the gentleman, we get to keep what we're willing to fight for. You can't delegate. We put some skin in the game. A lot of us spend a lot of time, a lot of hours, a lot of effort, a lot of shoe leather, fight and measure out. And Steve, I saw your hand up. This could get right down to door knocking, correct? Correct. Absolutely. Okay. Excellent. It's going to be just and, like the last um, hmm? Yeah. Um, I have an understanding that Laura's already met with Terry. Do you have a chance to meet me at I have not. They're not going for the fire. Yeah. Uh, lady with the three necklace. Is it, is it Gail? Yes. Hi, Gail. How you doing? Thank you. Good. Um, will they have to petition again to even get yes. on the ballot? I, okay, yes. so we could start there. Yes. And you know what? <laughs> I want to clarify that too, because that came up in, in questions somewhere that somebody asked. Council can put stuff on ballots. So there is an opportunity for. You know, I don't know, we want to make all streets purple. The council thinks it's a great idea, but we got to get a vote of the people we put on the ballot. It's a ridiculous thought process, obviously, but it's there. This particular item is RNC. RNC has language in it that protects from the council being able to do things like that. It's got to go to a vote of people. So that's one of the protections that came into play with Prop R in 1979 and then reiterated and changed to make it more sturdy, shall we say, when Prop C, or Measure C came to play in 1987. Any other, okay? Is it the same developer that tried to get the land last year? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. One more. So don't sign the wall. Petitions. <laughs> so the property, is it going to go all the way over to Ag Park that's already contaminated with the sewer? Going you know, on? I, I, I don't have details exactly what the development is other than 725 seems to be the number that's been floated, floated around. But the sewer plant they want to build, they want to build that first? I have not heard anything before tonight oh, about a sewer plant. the one plant. that they already so, have, because so, that was a big measure last year. So <laughs> I don't know anything on the sewer plant, but so that's the last question. Is, is there a sewer plant related to this? I would write that question. And then Natalie's gonna. So we have somebody to write some of your questions down so they're not forgotten. So Natalie is gonna be our Vanna White for tonight at this uh, at this pad. Steve. I just had a quick comment. Uh, the Swiss dairy plant over on Buchanan. That's your area. Yes. <clears throat> the word I got from manage, upper management at Swiss Dairy is somehow the zoning got messed up on that property. They're trying to sell it. There is there is zoning issues on that property. There's a two different types of zone that yep. run right through the middle of the building. Yep. There. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what? So I mean, think about this too. This is where RNC and I am a supporter of RNC, so don't take this the wrong way. Mm -hmm. um, but this is sometimes where RNC gets into trouble 
because part of that falls under RNC and another part of it does not it falls into the commercial zone. Mm -hmm. So Swiss Dairy is kind of stuck right now. There, yeah, yeah. And, and it's a blight on our neighborhood back there. I've been in conversations with our community development department trying to figure out a solution for it. Okay. Yeah. And only because of time restrictions, I'd like to keep this on our measure X. I, I think one of the questions yeah. we heard was how much land. Yeah, how far is it going to go over? Yeah, right how much land and what parts of the land. Ag park it to you. I'm hoping that the meeting on the 4th, they will have some conceptual drawings. You know, I don't know if they've gotten that far along. I know we've heard a lot of comments about, you know, why didn't they get involved with the community sooner and et cetera. But there's got to be a date, you know, where it starts. So hopefully they'll have a lot of these details worked out by then. But if not, then we'll have more and more. Okay. Yes. The bike trail is in all the paths and stuff. Are they going to be building around that? Or are they ripping all that out? No. Uh, if you think about that land down there, about where the telephone poles run, there's also a barbed wire fence. So the land coming south of that barbed wire fence or those trail areas is private land. Going north to the river bottom is land that is county or state owned. County, I'm pretty sure, um, is is the wildlife preserve. So it would be on the private sections of the land. Private that's closest to like Glacier and Arlington when it goes down into Norfolk. That's the section closest to the road. No. Yeah, yes, section closest to the road. Um, are you real familiar with the area? All right, my bike on it. Do you know where they fly the remote control blood plane? Yeah, yeah, that hill. Okay, it starts about that valley in that area and then travels east to Tyler Road. Okay, that so is the, the piece Cox, of land. Since Steve Cox is already uh, trying to get in, what is it, over 400 homes or whatever his is, over at Ann Park, if we had the 725, then we're over at that thousand again. Plus the fact that we had that the council voted against the people to fix the sewer plant for the city of Riverside because it was 40 years in repairs and they're raising their hikes on a graduated fee for the next 20 years, which is outrageous. So where does the sewer plant that they're talking about come in? I, 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 until tonight, okay. I haven't heard about sewer plants. I have a good suggestion. You and I sat, because I have this question about boundaries and property, and we sat with the map. You drew everything out for me. Why don't we redo that on a fresh piece of paper and we can send it out? November 4th. And you're going to draw it right here? From measure L, so. No, but there's a it's really good L. one we worked on last week. Yeah, permanent marker versus dry erases. Okay. Um, it's not even never hurts to have a better picture. Well, do you, I can draw it. I mean, I've drawn, <laughs> drawn this thing out so many times. <laughs> Um, Are there any other questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many of you travel that way lately, but it's becoming quite a popular bicycle trail when you go over there, and it's very dangerous. The road is not good. It's not wide. There's a double yellow line, so when you come behind a bicyclist, I feel kind of sorry because I've been a cyclist for many years. It's not fun to ride. It's not fun to drive behind behind them because it is dangerous. It's narrow. You can't pass. You're talking about Arlington now? Yeah, on Arlington. Yeah. 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 John? Jason, oh, Jason, Jason. Jason. My question revolves around, you know, we, you, you, the council passed water restrictions earlier this summer. Where's the water going to come yeah. from? Yeah. 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 When you're asking me, I just don't like that. Uh, uh, and I'll answer the question best I can because I did ask the question of public utilities the other day. We are, by the way, we're on a separate subject here. We're doing really well. We asked, we're, we were mandated by the state of California for 28% water rationing. We're running about 24%. We're doing pretty good. We would like to be in the 4% rationing percentile because we have reserves of water so I asked the same question is this is if this were to be approved by the voters would that be an issue for water and I'm being told it would not be an issue for water based on our reserves but I would have a hard time seeing how it fits within the 28 percent part so it's something to be worked out uh, John yes sir um, you mentioned earlier uh, something about a, a meeting with the development people, the city staff, 
and the, the developer? I don't know if the developer himself is showing up. Okay. Um, when this measure, when measure L came up, the city had a half a dozen department heads here at this meeting to answer questions from the public. Um, you know, about the project and, and to kind of let the public know that everything was okay as far as the city is concerned. Okay. Um, and you mentioned uh, another meeting with city staff. Well, I know in the past developments regarding the La Sierra Hills, the taxpayers have paid city staff a lot of money to look at plans, to to even back when they were going to put three golf courses down there and build, I believe, again, 750 homes, the city had a lot of money invested in it. And um, here's my, I, I just want to make this crystal clear. It bothers me to no end that our elected representative, the city council, says to us, the people, that up, up, it, this is a ballot measure, even though you've defended it seven times. It's a ballot measure, and I can't voice my opinion. That's bull. That's total bull. That's a total cop-out on city council who refuses to stick up for the voters of this city. And I'll guarantee you another thing, John. If, if this were an issue for Ward 4 or 5, those guys would be fit to be tied if we were going to develop 750 homes in the green belt. So you're my representative, and I want some, some action from you. You represent us, and I don't want you to be silent on this issue because some legal says, oh, we, we can't voice an opinion on it, even though it's going to affect the whole city. Thank you. You're that welcome. And I think you missed my point. I made to Mark right there. Mark asked me that very direct question. If my whole community wants to oppose this, where do I well, stand on it? I represent our community. We've opposed so, it seven times. Well, but but you're not okay. Open and transparent government. I don't like your idea, Jim. So please don't bring it forward. That would not be open and transparent government. So when somebody brings something forward, being open and transparent. You have to listen, you have to pay attention. Now, on the fourth, I've got these people come forward to talk about their plans. Bring your thoughts and bring your ideas to them. John, just real quick, I told my wife, this, this whole thing with the Los Area Bills reminds me of a teenager who's told, no, you can't do something, but he keeps pestering his parents time after time after time after time, until so eventually they give in. That's what we're involved with right here. Jim, let me just stop for a moment. Can everybody hear Jim, or would you like to use a microphone? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, here's the department. Just one thing, sir. We got you, Jim. We hear you. Yeah, Jim. Right. We got you back. We got you back. That you want to ask that we can write down a quick Deep question on you know, This is maybe where Kevin Nash comes in, because I was thinking Kevin should go before me, because Kevin would have an opportunity to talk about some of the challenges challenges they faced in the Norco Hills, and I know some of the good things that came out of it as well. And then that may formulate some more questions that we want to make sure to get addressed. Because this information is going to go to them. Because we'll want to know about the sewer plant. I haven't heard anything about it. Um, our sewer plant in Riverside has just been upgraded. I understand we've got plenty of room for much more of that stuff that goes Singing into first. the sewer plant. Um, so I don't know why they would need a new sewer plant, but maybe they do. Um, how much land and where, I think they'll provide some maps for that. That should be pretty straightforward and easy. Bike trails, depends on how you look at it, could be affected, absolutely. That many houses down there could be an issue for bike trails. But actually, the question I'd like to ask is, how, how, do, how does this track potentially interface with our existing homes and trails? I mean, if we're going to go in that direction, how does it interface with our existing neighborhoods? Is anybody looking into the uh, ramifications of all that additional traffic that we do on the I can dance with that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
The questions I asked, and I think I posted them on our flyer because I'd asked them. Here's what they told me directly, John. I talked to Virginia Blumenthal and uh, Laura Pearson. They came to my home and told me about the project. They said, right now it's projected 725 homes. I asked if a traffic study had been done, and as of two and a half weeks ago, the answer was no. I asked if um, a vehicle emission study has been done as of two and a half weeks ago, no. And whatever else I had in my flyer, for those of you who got it, um, environmental impact study, has that been done? They said no. So at this point, as of two and a half weeks ago, none of those things have been done, and have you heard differently, John? Oh, I was, okay. I was in no, our class. Okay. No, you're good. You know what, that is, that is good, that is good. I don't think I miss, I'm so, so that's sorry. That's okay, because I don't think you have, because you and I have talked, and if you had, what was the question? if you had heard that any of these studies have been done, because they were in two and a half weeks ago, I don't I think have not heard much. anything. I, didn't I have not. Yes. I'd just like to know which former city councilwoman and which former mayor will be on the developer's payroll this time. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that was a, that was a question and a comment altogether. Thank you, Bob. I haven't heard of any mayor yet. Yes. It will be the same one. Yes. They've already talked about it. They said they, I was reading the, um, the gen, I was reading the meeting minutes from the Alborn Unified School District. It's the only reason I really know it. Um, they talked about this about three weeks ago at their meeting. The developer will give them about 10 acres of land to build, but they'll get no money to build. Oh. And ah. yes, they will need, go. and I believe, fire station, increased police force. So those are things that uh, we'll be discussing in the future if you want to have another meeting. But yes to that. Any other questions? So we, we touched on fire department, police, schools, environmental studies, traffic issues. Kevin, any other thoughts? <laughs> okay, any other questions? I just said... Facility. The same way your schools pay for bonds now. They put a piece of that tax on everybody probably. And we understand where we are with the school bonds, so that's a little bit of a scare. But we can also get more information for you on that if that's something you're interested in. So I would just put, yeah, how would a school be paid for? Because let's just find out how. I saw a quest. Uh, utilities. Steve, your hand went so fast. And utilities. So Steve. Yeah. Utilities. And what is the question about utilities? Water usage, sewer usage. <laughs> what is that already down there? The How will it be supplied? How's that, how's that going to be affected by do we, do we have the resources to provide? Yes. Utilities? Okay. That's one. Yes. So mine would be how you fix the roads to have that many people coming and going. And mm. going through Norco or going down here <coughs> on the island. That's trash. Right. 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 Yeah, right. so that would come under the traffic Barely. issues. Oh, I just wanted to add things about Ag Park. That, you know, that used to be, part, those hills used to be part of Camp Anza also. We have to stop on this because we're not going to have time if we get to Ag Park. To, it's about Measure L tonight, but we could do Ag Park at another meeting if you want to. Okay, because okay. there's a lot of updates coming through the DTSC and the Army just, Corps of Engineers. If we had all unlimited time, Honestly, I think we have a high interest in that in this group. We could do another meeting. Yeah, because they're going to be in the contamination Why is zone. Laura Pearson, or whatever her last name is, meeting with a developer. Is she our representative, or what? She, yeah. she, yeah, she's not. She's not she a official representative. She's a community member that reached out to try to figure out a solution. I think any one of us in this room probably could have done it. We we knew he was coming back. We knew that. Mm -hmm. We knew that if we had input, we might make a difference. And I think her and Virginia stepped up to see if they could make that difference. According to the paper, it said that community uh, people were meeting also with them. I we never heard of it. They are the I community think, people. I, th I think that's who they were referring yeah. to. Yeah, well, that's who they were referring yeah. to. What makes them community well, people is that they approached the developer at <clears throat> last year as residents. They didn't approach them as former council person 
or woman of the year, they approach them as residents and like Council Member Dark said, any one of us could have, so where they put into that position, no, but now that they're in the position, we need to listen, evaluate, and then discuss. And you have a meeting coming up is primarily informational or is that also <coughs> for conversation and it, it, it's, good, it's going to be a two week that on the, uh, no i want to say october 4th excuse <laughs> me november 4th it's going to be a two-way dialogue what i'm anticipating seeing take place is they're going to set up their information and give you and give you guys a little bit about where they're at what why they did it what they're doing and then take feedback from us with do we like? Do we not like? Do we think it ought to have this? We ought to have that? To get feedback and then see if they can find something that works for the whole community. Now, since it may um, or may not work, but it's better than no conversation. Since that was mentioned, this is probably I was going to bring it up later, but that's the point. You, you, those of you with the flyers, you saw that on November 9th, that was the meeting we were going to have here. Well, we've been preempted, so it's not going to happen here, which is actually maybe a good thing, because if we had <coughs> that meeting that night, we'd be getting a lot of information, but we wouldn't be able to go through a creative process of channeling the information. If, and I'm going to kind of go by a show of hands, I had to decide what I was going to do at the November 9th meeting, since we won't have that presentation here. My thought is it's only going to be a week later, in fact, not even a week. <clears throat> we could use November 9th as processing, uh, exploring, problem solving, and developing if you have an interest. But if I'm going to have an empty room because you don't want to talk about it anymore, I will do a different meeting. Show of hands, would you like to do that on November 9th? So, actually, I'm not getting too many people who would like to. So, I don't know if we will. I only saw about seven or eight hands come up. So, those of you who didn't raise your hand, now I'm going to ask it differently. Who, who would not be interested in having that type of meeting on November 9th? I think it's a little too early. I'm thinking about processing the information that you hear the week before. Do you still... So, I don't know what I'm going to do because I don't know that I, when I asked who wanted to have it, a few hands came up, but I said, when I asked who didn't want to have it, only a few hands came up. So there's a lot of people sitting on your hands. Well, well you're not being clear. Not a decision to process the information. If you don't know what you're going to hear, how can you make a decision if you want another meeting? No, you don't know what's going to go on. Oh, okay, because what it would be is the November 4th meeting, you're going to get the information. You're going to get a lot of this answered, and then Councilman Bernard is going to take the questions also, and hopefully they'll have some answers by then. So you're going to get the information. Who's going to give us the information? Who's going to do what? Who's handing out this information? You're, you're, you're going to get you're going to get the information the way I get it. And it's I'm going to be from the developers. And I'm ask, well, I'm asking multiple locations. I'm going to talk to staff, and I'm going to verify. I'm going to get information from the developer, and then verify through staff as best I can and other sources. So, so that I will try to present information that comes from. Them. So the only person speaking at the meeting is going to be you. Oh, on October, on November fourth. Yeah. No, it's going to. Be, I'm expecting a conversation to take place. I'm no, expecting. Who, who else is? is? Well, yeah, the developers team will be there. Laura, Virginia will be there. Ken Gutierrez, which is our, is a retired city planner. So those three are confirmed right now. So those guys that have already been meeting with the developer are yeah. going to be there. Are going? Yes, they're coming to share what their thoughts are, what they think. And then to get your input. So it's a two way conversation, is what I'm looking for. Who's I want your guys' show? thoughts to be put in there. Who's moderating the I, will, I probably will end up doing that. Yeah. So I would just hope that we'd all just show up, be friendly, we'll have that it'd be a dialogue. But yeah. 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 moderation yeah. probably. Yeah. Okay, and so it's going to be a one sided presentation. It is going to be a one sided presentation with your sides. feedback. That is accurate. If you want the two a that are going to be side. talking are the two that are trying to make a deal now, yes. right? Essentially, yes. 
So that's why I'm saying I don't think it's premature to follow up after that. But if, if we're going to have an empty room, I'm not going to, to go and book it and have perhaps speakers come out who can talk about a different side. Or you come to share your own thoughts. I'm going to um, leave this open. Maybe at the end of the night, you can give me some, some other feedback. But it's now time to get on the Two fast thoughts. Is everybody getting my emails from the government document, the website from the city? Yes. If you're not, write down your email address for me and we'll get it in the system. Second one is, does everybody recognize my art skill? Yeah. I know, it's bad. The, the land we're talking about is a section that kind of comes in behind Western Hills, runs along the bike trail, and it's much bigger than this, and goes out to Tyler. So that's a piece of land we're talking about.